Hi, this is Krista with ArtisticVegan.com and welcome back to another Artistic Vegan Show. Today is a special episode, episode number 33. For those of you that follow my husband, Gerald Clark, or are into numerology or esoteric or researching history, you may know that 33 is a big deal and a big number. So today, it's all about the professor or Thoth, and Gerald Clark is actually going to be on at the end of the show with a special on the professor. So I can't wait to share that with you. And in the meantime, we're gonna make a recipe that is approved by the professor himself with grains and nuts and dried fruit. So it'll be healthy with healthy fats. Granola is great, it's good for your heart, it's high in fiber. This is an oil-free version, and I think you're really gonna love it. I tested it out yesterday and we just loved it. We just actually stole a little bite of it right before we recorded and I can't wait to show you how it comes together. So let's do this. In a bowl I have one and a half cups of oats. To that you'll want to add a half cup of your favorite nut. If you have a nut allergy you can go with a seed. I also have a half cup of flour. You can use your favorite. I'm going with amaranth flour. Amaranth is high in protein, it's gluten free, and for the oats you can also use a gluten free oat. So you need two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and just a little bit of salt, like a quarter teaspoon or less. That was just a little dash. Okay, and mix that together in a bowl. I also have a heaping half cup of raisins that I'm going to reserve and at the very end of the recipe we'll pour those in once the granola has cooled. So for now you can just set those aside and then take your wet ingredients in a small little mixing bowl. So I have four tablespoons of a nut butter. If you have a nut allergy you could use a seed butter. And then I'm going to add a third cup of your favorite sweetener. I'm going with agave. And if you want a sweeter version, simply use a half cup of syrup and two tablespoons of the nut or seed butter, or even oil, a teaspoon of vanilla. This is optional if you don't want it. And this is pure vanilla extract, straight up vanilla. Mix that together. And add that to your dry. You want to mix that together until it's well combined. Place it on a sheet either lined with parchment paper, a silicone mat, or I have mine just lightly greased with about a teaspoon of avocado oil. We'll bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, stirring every five minutes. When you take it out, you'll want it to cool completely on the pan, and this will help it get even crunchier. Once it's cool, we'll add the raisins, and I'll show you what that looks like. Granola has come out of the oven and it has cooled. It is crisp and crunchy. Oh, you can just, can you hear that? 
<laughs> I probably shouldn't touch it all. Um, and then you can store it in a in a container that's sealed for five days. Store it like you would granola and use it as you would. You can use it as a, a morning cereal with almond milk or coconut milk or whatever you'd like. Or you can do what we did and make a parfait. I just took a banana and a mango. Yesterday I did a banana and peach and some coconut cream, which is basically a can of high fat coconut that's been refrigerated and the creamy part whipped up a little and that's it. Crunchy, flavorful, delicious. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been Krista with ArtisticVegan.com. I hope you love this simple recipe. It's really as easy as mix it, bake it, stir it a couple times, and you're done. And now let's go see what Gerald's up to with the professor. Bye. All right. So based on this episode number 33, I found it timely to discuss some of the diet habits of you, the professor, from history. And so I'm going to read for everyone an excerpt from Manly Pease Hall's book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, and what they said about you and your diet. So sit tight, relax. In his admirable little treatise, Our Flag, Robert Allen Campbell, revives the details in a, of an obscure but important episode of American history the designing of the colonial flag in 1775. The account involves a mysterious man concerning whom no information is available other than that he was familiar with terms with General George Washington and Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Is that true? The following description of him is taken from Campbell's treatise. Little seems to have been known concerning this old gentleman you don't look that old. And in the materials from which this account is compiled, his name is not even once mentioned. Did you know that? They made you anonymous. Is that what you wanted? Okay. Okay. For he is uniformly spoken of or referred to as the professor. He was evidently far beyond his three score and ten years and he often referred to historical events of more than a century previous just as if he had been living witness of their occurrence. Still, he was erect, vigorous, and active, hale, hearty, and clear-minded, as strong and energetic every way as the prime of his life. Well, you really had him fooled, didn't you? He was tall, a fine figure, perfectly easy. Does that mean you had a relationship with gravity? perfectly easy? You might explain more of that to the people, okay. And very dignified in his manners, being at once courteous, gracious, and commanding. He was, for those times, and considering the customs of the colonists, and this is where Krista Show comes in today, very peculiar in his method of living, for he ate no flesh, fowl, or fish. He never used for food any green thing. So I guess you had a problem with green eggs and ham then. Is that right? Dr. Seuss would be very disappointed to hear this. He never ate any root or anything unripe. He drank no liquor, wine, or ale for all you beer drinkers out there. The professor frowns on this. But confined his diet to cereals and their products, fruits that were ripened on the stem in the sun, not in the store, in somebody else's basket. Nuts, mild tea, and the sweets of honey, sugar, or molasses. You, you know, you can't actually be a vegan like us if you're eating the product of any animal, and that includes honey from the bee boy. <laughs> I mean, sir. So there you have it, a little diet excerpt from American history in 1775, where the master shows up with George Washington and Benjamin Franklin guiding them 
on the selection of the symbology for the flag. An anonymous person they just referred to as the master. I'm Gerald Clark. You can find me at GeraldClark77.com and on YouTube, 7 Planet Broadcasting under Gerald Clark. Thank you.